Tell you what, I don't care how bad your day's been, get you a nice little cigar and a cup of joe or maybe a couple fingers of whiskey and uh, everything just kind of seems like it's going to be all right. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today it is time to go over, if you can tell from, we've got our little cigar Bible up here and we've got a nice little assortment of cigars. It is time to do our monthly unboxing of Pravada Cigar Club. My good friends over at Pravada, Brian. Love that guy. We're doing a little something different today. I've got a whole gang of uh, papers here. Normally there's only one handout. This month, Brian asked me if instead of sending me one of the boxes, he sent me one cigar out of all the boxes was gonna be different. So hopefully I'm explaining this properly, right? So normally you get three cigars. Two of the cigars are gonna be the same in all the boxes that went out this month. And the third cigar, depending on, I'm sure the flavor profile you'll fill out in your survey when you join Pravada, the third cigar was gonna be one of these four that he sent me. So one of each of the four that is the variable in your box. So everybody got two. One, one of each of the four, four that is the variable. Got two, two that probably, that probably here, here. here. This, this should be should be third, third cigar, cigar the different of these four that he sent me. So, so one of the one four. Of the four. These, four these four cigars, cigars are the different cigar, cigar in everybody's, everybody's box. box. Hopefully, Hopefully two of the cigars are gonna be the same in all the box. I probably didn't explain that well. But regardless, we're gonna go over these four cigars. One of these should have been in your box. If you're not familiar with Pravada, Pravada Cigar Club is a Cigar of the Month Club where you pay $25 to be a member and they send you three cigars every month right to your doorstep. Now, the difference with Pravada is they focus on rare, hard to find, aged, limited edition, out of circulation, off the wall weird shit that nobody's ever seen. Pretty much none of the stuff you get in Pravada for the most part is gonna be something you find at a brick and mortar. These are all super rare, unique cigars that are just kind of something to look forward to every month. Pravada has also recently opened up their own shop. Some of the rare stuff, they do have extras in their shop that you can buy. And they also opened up a part of their shop that they carry production cigar. So it can kind of be a one-stop shop. It should be noted, I'm pretty sure Brian told me the other day that Pravada is closed for new members. Uh, they've kind of hit their threshold that they want to hit. And now it will be on wait list. So I'm not 100% sure how that's gonna work, when he's gonna have the wait list ready and all that stuff. Pravada means private and it really is a private club at this point. Uh, if you're in there, you're one of the cool kids. If you're not, get on the wait list and you could be one of the cool. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're still cool if you're not in Pravada. We still love you. But seriously, I think Pravada is gone to wait list because I think the club is full if I'm remembering what Brian told me correctly. So just a side note. Today, I am actually not smoking one of the cigars in the bundle. I am smoking a little something special. A little sneak peek, if you were. If you've watched my videos for a while, you'll know Brian and I put together a Sire Signature Bundle back around Christmas time for you guys. I went through with Brian and we curated some bundles based on some cigars I like. This is one we've been working on for several months. This is a little sneak peek of one of the cigars that's gonna be in that bundle. I think we're probably gonna have that bundle ready for you guys next month. And this is a little sweet number from Robert Caldwell. I don't wanna show you guys too much because I want it to be a surprise, but this is a sweet little number from Robert Caldwell that if I'm not mistaken, he rolled especially for the bundle. There were several of the ones that we got rolled specifically for the bundle, and I think this was one of them. It's never been in this size before. It's a tasty little number. You guys are gonna love it. Can't wait. But anyway, a little sneak peek. But this month, July Pravada box, we got some winners in here. So first, look at this guy right here. I love a Lancero. I'm not gonna get too far into the Lancero thing because you guys know I've talked about Lanceros till I'm blue in the face. They're great. When they're good, they're fantastic. The, the slight downside of Lanceros is because they're skinnier, they are harder to roll. And sometimes you can get a bit of a snug draw with Lanceros. When they're on, they're on, buddy. Your wrapper to leaf ratio is bang up. And uh, I think they're the best representation of a blend you can get. They are delicious. We're gonna go over my notes and Brian's notes and everybody's notes. And we're gonna try to do this in a relatively quick manner. And I've got all the, I got a lot of literature, okay? So there's gonna be a lot of 
jumping around today because of the way we're doing this month's video. So this dude, the first Lancero of the bunch. This is the young, hmm, damn it. Taba Carlos, Taba Calero. T -t -t Today, Junior! Taba Calaros, young Taba Calaros, freshman, aged six years. I'm probably destroying that. But if I didn't, you guys would be disappointed. I'm not gonna read the whole story on all these because it'll take forever, but basically, to summarize, Christian Eroa? Man, I am, this is getting ridiculous. Christian Eroa. <laughs> Eroa. Eroa? E I R O A. Eroa. Eero, Christian Eero, fuck it, whatever. The founder of Eero Cigars, I'm killing that, I'm sure. Was born and raised in tobacco and born to Juno Aurora, founder of Camacho Cigar, to these names. I mean, really, seriously, why does everybody gotta have complicated names? Why can't people be like Smith? What am I saying? My name's Cyrus, nobody pronounces that right either. Who the hell am I to judge? <laughs> CLE combines traditional methods with advanced technologies thanks to Bayer Scientific. Bayer Scientific, the Ashburn folks. CLE has been working with Bayer for over five years to create the most sterile and clean tobacco farm and factory along with the most advanced Corojo tobacco in its original Cuban seed Corojo. This is a Lancero. It embodies the classic Honduran CLE tobaccos, mostly Cuban Corojo, and delivers them in a one-two punch to the senses. My notes on this cigar. On the nose, I got light cocoa, almost like cocoa puff cereal. On the first third, I got some cedar, some creamy tobacco, a touch of spice as it warmed up, sweet graham crackery flavor, leather nicely balanced by a decent amount of spice, nice smooth medium body, retro has a little kick. Second, third, same flavors continue, so maybe a bit of cocoa powder coming in at the end, I think a touch of vanilla on the finish also. Nice creamy smoke, great smoke production. Last little bit, same flavors basically, wood flavor still there, but died down a bit. Sweet cream and vanilla up a bit, still balanced by a nice spice, definitely a cocoa powder vibe. Had no burn issues and a great draw. So now what Brian said on this guy, he got a faint toast, cedar, sweetness, and a tad of cocoa. Hey, look at that. Occasionally I get one right. Tons of graham cracker, slight bread notes alongside cedar, vanilla, and pepper retrohale. The smoke is fluffy and amazing. Further, he gets some dried basil. Each puff changes with graham, minerals, wood, creamy smoke, vanilla, salt, and some cinnamon on the palate. Damn, he says. Damn. He put a damn in all capital. He was impressed with this dude. Even further, I get florals. The smoke becomes more oily, like sharp cheddar and cinnamon dominant. And that's the second time I've heard Brian talk about cheddar. I don't think I've ever gotten cheddar in a cigar. I've gotten kind of a funky, like Parmesan footy cheese kind of smell on the nose of the cigar before, but I don't know that I've ever actually had like a cheddar note tasting a cigar. Pairing, graham cracker crusted cheesecake, key lime pie, bourbon, great with a good Hoffenweizen beer. I figured I heard that before, Hoffenweizen. A chilled Pinot Grigio or Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. After eating sushi or fish, I've told you, I'm not I'm not into the sushi and cigars. I like sushi, but I don't think of, I'm like, like a, a nice grilled meat, like a nice rare steak before cigars. That's, that's my jam. Maybe fried chicken. Well, I mean, you can't go wrong with fried chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, white chocolate nibbles. Nibbles? My suggestion with this one was, uh, I tried Florida Cana, Florida Cana 25, which uh, the folks at Florida Cana were nice enough to send me their 25 year. It is delicious. Added some sweetness, Balvini Caribbean cast. Now this is one that you'll probably hear me shout out several times. I might've paired this with more than one cigar because lately I've been on a Balvini Caribbean cast kick. I have found that that damn scotch, there's something about the sweetness and rum undertones that just goes fantastic with a lot of cigars. Really enjoyed it, thought it was an excellent, Cigar. Moving right along, Hechikara. Hechikira? Hechisira. Hechikira. I'm gonna say Hechikira. <laughs> Hechikira. Fuck it. This guy right here. Hechikira. Age six years. Sorceress, cigar maker, entrepreneur, and true dynamo. Grace Soda Longa partnered with CLE in 2014 to make this cigar. It is a Nicaraguan Puro, aged six years, now perfectly ripe. You're in for a treat. So on this one, I got light tobacco, barnyard manure funk on the nose. Now this is one of those ones with the funk I was talking about, right? So on this one, it's not just like barnyard. Like sometimes it's barnyard, which is like a dusty barn kind of smell. And then sometimes it's more of like a funky, almost manure kind of smell. And this one for me had a little bit more of that 
funky manure kind of smell. Sweetness up front with some woodiness, dark charred nutty flavor, black pepper on the back of the tongue with a little coffee bitterness on the mid palate, mild spice, mild retro. On the second third, almost a graham cracker honey sweetness up front, charred oak woody note with a earth and leather base, still a touch of black pepper, some coffee bitterness on mid palate, still mild on the spice, occasional whiffs of a floral note, nutty flavor seems lost at the moment. Last third, Nutty is back, kind of a honey roasted peanut vibe, flavors otherwise basically same. Sweetness is hanging in, unlike a lot of cigars where the sweetness dies at the end. Yeah, I distinctly remember that. A lot of cigars, as you get toward the end, they can get a little more bitter and a little more bitey towards the end. This one, I feel like the sweetness hung in or even ramped up a little bit as the cigar went. Draw was semi-snug, but I had no issues, got plenty of smoke. Brian's notes, let's see what Brian says. Vinegar and tobacco on the shaft, feel uncomfortable sniffing a shaft. That's what she said. Don't you dare. Especially another man's shaft. Too far? <laughs> the first puff is wow. The cedar is sharp, the dried peaches are tangy, and, and the peanut. Flavor is overwhelmingly savory. Further in, the flavors are still there. Sweet, tangy, woody, and floral. Halfway through, I get some leather, and the florals get pleasantly soapy. This cigar gets so tangy at times, it reminds me of Sour Patch Kids. And the wood is turning to a chard now. White toast, chard wood, sugar, butter, sour candies. In the end, it all comes together in bliss. Holy cow. I was a fan too. I really enjoyed the cigar. Brian's suggestions for pairings. He's saying rye whiskey, sour beer, or a low IBU IPA, cognac, milk, chocolate, white chocolate, vanilla custard, ice cream, flan. Man, I like flan. If it's made right. If it's not made right, it tastes like fucking eggs. It's weird. But if somebody knows how to make flan, delicious. After buffalo wings, I don't like spicy food prior to cigars. I found that anytime I eat spicy food prior to cigars, it just fucks my palate up. And then the cigar seems hot and stingy and weird. Same with Mexican food. I don't generally like Mexican food because I usually put jalapenos and stuff in my Mexican. I don't like Mexican food prior to cigars. I don't know, that's just me. What do you guys say? I pair this with a flat white. If you don't know what a flat white is, it's kind of the same thing as a latte. It's steamed milk and espresso, but there's a higher espresso to steamed milk ratio. There's less steamed milk, higher espresso ratio, which makes it very nice. I said Mickner's Sour Mash Toasted Barrel would be good with this, or a sweet rye like Pikeville's or a Mickner's rye would also be really good. Moving right along. Sorry for not spending a ton of time on these. We got a lot to go through. Moving along to the, Jesus, smoke. No smoke production problem with this uh, Caldwell. Moving along to the Illusione. Illusione Privé, 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 Pravada Cigar Club exclusive. Don Giolito, founder of Illusione, is a perfectionist. It took him six months to craft this blend. Once he was satisfied with the blend, he then made the cigar and let them sit another six months. Very cool. I'm not gonna read the backstory on this because it is involved and it'll take forever to go through these. Tasting notes I got on this guy. On the nose, I got barnyard slightly floral. And the slightly floral is more on the foot than on the shaft. Really? Nothing. <laughs> the body, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you definitely get a little little more of the floral on the tip there, you know, on the tip of the shaft. That's what she said. <laughs> little floral. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is spiraling out of control. On light up, I got charred wood, peanut shells, earth, and pepper. Uh, once it got warmed up, still charred wood and earth. Slightly sweet, nutty cinnamon, red pepper in the throat. Tingle on the lips. Spicy retro, nice punch, good smoke production. Second third, cigar has smoothed out, still lots of flavor, but more integrated, balanced, less smack you in the face. Charred wood still there, but flavors seem creamier. A tingly, almost menthol feel in the mouth. Maybe a little sweetened coffee with cream on the end. Uh, third third, I don't have any notes, which means it was basically the same, it finished out. Uh, sometimes I don't put notes for the third, and when I don't, that means it didn't really change. Brian, on the other hand, uh, let's see what he got. He get wood, clove, honey, Granny Smith apple on the body, dried fruits on the cold draw. Reminds me of an old apple fruit roll-up. Nostalgic. Man, I loved fruit roll-ups when I was a kid. These things were so great. Every time I got one of my lunch, I was stoked, man. I 
I love those things. First puff has dried apple, cedar, and the nicest retro hail. There is a slight pepper as well. Cinnamon wood baked apples with a great textured smoke and the finished has the best zing to it. There are also tons of agonorsa florals. Second third is more apple, but now I get charred wood. Creamy smoke with cinnamon. The retro hail is very peaty, smoky at this point. The final third, I get much dried fruits and florals. It's unreal. This thing is a true masterpiece. He is suggesting pairing with Sumatra or medium roast coffee, wheat ale with an orange slice. Okay, that's against man law. You can't fruit the beer. Let's just go into that. You don't fruit beer. Some of you may disagree. You might like a Corona with, well, we gotta be careful saying Corona these days, but you might like one of those with a lime. You might like one of these, the wheat beers with the oranges and shit. I'm out. You gotta put fruit in the beer. The beer's no good, don't drink it. You don't fruit beer. I thought that was a man law at some point. Yeah, Blue Moon, see? Blue Moon, that's another one. Useless, who wants that shit? Lowland Scotch, Jack Daniels, Spanish red wine, apples and honey, Apple pie a la mode with vanilla ice cream, and apple pie a la mode with ice cream. Now you're talking my language. Whipped cream, I feel like eating sour gummies a few hours beforehand may bring out the tangy and fruity notes. After a meal of barbecue ribs, champagne. You got some champagne up in here. I would agree with some of that. Don't fruit the beer. Okay, we, we went over that. This thing had a lot of spicy notes for me, so I feel like, and it was punchy. It had a lot of strong flavors. So I feel like this would hold up well to a nice, strong, robust, whiskey probably hold up well even to an isla scotch if you wanted to do something like that i think this would hold up really well to like an elijah craig barrel proof that would be really good i think this might go well with some russell reserve single barrel which i think is about 115 proof it's got some nice sweet flavors that might kind of balance out some of the spiciness of the cigar and i think it would be really good so that would be my suggestion not fruited beer everything else he said except for fruited beer i'm out on the fruited beer no fruit in your beer you can't fruit the beer last but certainly not least this might have been my favorite this was a super dark wrapper, which you guys know, I tend to lean toward the dark wrappers and it's a Lancero. So come on, you know, I'm gonna like this one. OSOK, one shot, one kill. The deal on this guy, again, we're not gonna go too deep into the backstory because it'll take forever, but this is an OG OSOK by Edgar Hoyle, 2015 Lancero, aged five years. This is a Matt Booth cigar blend for a guy, Edward. Oil. It's a Nicaraguan blend. The one after this was a Honduran, but this was a Nicaraguan with a little Honduran. So it says there is a little Honduran in here. I got earth, pepper, spicy cocoa on the light up. Once it got warmed up, it reminded me of like spicy chocolate. So have you ever had like spicy chocolate where they put actually like red pepper flake or some kind of thing spicy in some dark chocolate? That's kind of what this reminded me of because I got this real good chocolatey note, but also with the spiciness, really nice. Also got some woodiness. Retro has some heat and earthy base with a touch of mustiness at times. Second third, cocoa is getting sweeter, almost a hot cocoa flavor. Spiciness levels off a bit, but still there. Spicy on the lips, a little black pepper tingle. Charred oak wood, still earthy, almost basement vibes. Finished off, stayed basically the same. Cocoa went to a bready chocolate, kind of like the brownie, kind of I've talked about before. Sometimes I get this kind of bready chocolate note, which brownie is the best way I can use to describe that flavor. The nice sweetness up front balanced by spice that makes this smoke great till the end. This was a good one. I remember, I just smoked this one back a day or two ago, so I distinctly remember. Chocolatey, spicy, sweet, and spicy. I love cigars that have like a good bit of sweetness to the wrapper, but also bring a little bit of spiciness and heat because I think they play off each other and balance really well. Brian got funky cheese. Man with the cheese, Brian. Did you eat a lot of cheese before you sampled these cigars or what, brother? That's, a, that's a, You got a lot of cheese going on this month. <laughs> Funky cheese barnyard smell on the body. The first puff is very earthy with a great spicy sensation in the mouth, but not overwhelming. Certainly more mild than it looks. Earth, cocoa, black pepper, and oak. Not much on the retro at first. I start to get a real root-like flavor. Uh, vanilla root, wood. The smoke is also getting tangy, sometimes sweet, sometimes more sour. Even further in, I start to get a vanilla charcoal sharp cheddar earth he explains that when he says earth he really means like a mushroom or soil which yeah i mean that's kind of people say earth and they're like we've well, never eaten dirt asshole well, how the hell do you know what earth tastes like but it's that kind of loomy mushroomy earthy flavor i mean that's that's the flavor you get in a lot of cigars sometimes it gets very like aged and musty which almost reminds me of like a basement kind of thing but anyway he described that then comes the good stuff. This cigar really comes to life in the second half. I start to get deep, dark fruits that remind me of preserves or jam. There is a detergent-like quality in the floral note. Vinegar wears down 
but the wood kicks up pretty intensely. Then I get a note of lime, but further down it becomes sour grape. Wow, this is complex. It ends with white pepper, vanilla, earth, and charcoal. Very interesting. Pair this with bourbon, cognac, rum, light beer, white wine, after Italian food, root beer about an hour before M&M's. I really like root beer with cigars. I'm not a huge soda guy. In general, I don't recommend soda with cigars because I think the kind of carbonated soda can almost kind of sting because of the carbonation and the acidity of it. I think it doesn't always go well with cigars, but like a nice root beer or a cream soda, I think there's something about those flavors that go super well with a cigar. I went back to Belvini on this one. This cigar was fantastic with Belvini. There was something about this cigar that the Belvini came out all sweet brought out like this sweet vanilla kind of note in the cigar and the Belvini would just tasted like honey and it, it was just, I would definitely recommend Belvini Caribbean cask with a cigar. I think I said that on a previous one, but I told you I was gonna be revisiting that because it went great with that cigar. So that is it. Sorry if this was a little bit of a disjointed situation this week. That was a lot of stuff to go over. We had four cigars. Brian always includes extensive notes on these. Uh, so I had to paraphrase some of the stuff, but nevertheless, another great month from the good folks at Travada. Before we finish, I always got to do a shameless plug. New shirts are out. So if you haven't checked those out, we've got some new merch, we've got some hats, we've got some shirts, got some new stuff on the website. So definitely I'll leave a link below. Definitely go check that out if you're interested. This is the way, I got a little flicking you guys off. Little uh, whiskey bottle and a cigar because, well, that's the way I live life, whiskey and cigars. <laughs> As always, I can't link any of the Pravada stuff down below because of YouTube restrictions. So if you go to the website for the shirts, I'll actually put a link to the website. Not only is there new merch there, but there will be links to Pravada so you can get all the information there if you like. I think that's it. I think that wraps this one up. I'm gonna sit here and finish this fantastic Robert Caldwell right here. Next month, we may not do a Pravada unboxing. I don't know, we'll have to see if we can fit it in because if we drop this signature bundle next month as planned, then I might just be doing a review of the bundle and kind of showing you guys that. So depends on how next month works out, whether we end up doing the bundle or we do a Pravada box for next month. But nevertheless, there will be some form of Pravada stuff on the channel next month. For the month of July, that wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some good information out of it and enjoyed just kind of hanging out and maybe having a cigar with me. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. Happy smokes and long ashes to all of you. We will see you in the next video. Man, I am excited about this Caldwell. I'm excited about the whole bundle. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. We spent like months curating this bundle. So hopefully you guys like it because it wasn't a quick thing. We've been working on this damn thing since almost the beginning of the year. Just hey, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Coming soon. Keep an eye out.